What's up, everybody? Can everybody hear me? Amazing. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. I'm going to, I don't know everything. I'm going to start with that uh, about farming. You know, we're always learning every season. Um, but I'm blessed to have uh, had, I guess, eight years experience growing. And uh, I guess my life mission now is to really bring gardening to the people. And, uh, you know, I was off in farms for, you know, a couple years learning my craft. And then I was, you know, way out west. Long story short, uh, I ran out of money. I was a 22-year-old kid. I saw all my friends who, uh, anyways, were like getting jobs and doing all these things. And I realized, uh, you know, I needed resources if we really wanted to make impact. And uh, I thought, okay, I could, uh, I don't have a yard. I don't have land. I don't have any money. I'm a, you know, broke kid. Uh, literally living out of my backpack. I said, okay, other people have land. I started to work in other people's yards and help them grow and really um, utilize their space better. And then I had this idea that we could really grow food in our backyards. There's all this space everywhere. And all the farming space we're using, we're, we're killing the soil and all the beautiful green space we have all over the place, we're developing it. So I really want to uh, change the narrative. So uh, if you will, I'm going to show you a little bit about, I'm going to give you some background and just kind of my story and throughout that, um, kind of what I've learned along the way. Does that sound good? good. Yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, this is me eating a carrot I grew. <laughs> I had much shorter hair and uh, this was when uh, I started uh, Jack's Garden Beds. It was like, I'm going to build people's garden beds and it's going to be amazing and it was uh, Small time, but that's how I started, you know. And uh, anyways, this is my uh, an ex-girlfriend, Valerie, in the middle. We're still friends. But uh, the couple, I just wanted to mention, they uh, paid for my farmer's market the first two seasons. It's such a sweet couple, and I would, honestly wouldn't be here without them, you know. And there's so many people who have touched me, so I figured I'd put them in here. And one day I hope to do it for somebody else, you know. Um, this is me with my first truck, 1500 bucks five years ago with a dream. And uh, this was probably a year or two in. I met someone at the farmer's market, Kathy. She's an angel. Shout out, Kathy. Um, she literally opened up. I built her some garden beds. She opened up her side yard for us to start an urban farm. Literally, like, the vision. So this is us. This is all, or this is me. It literally was just me in the beginning. No team, right? Um, and this was all grass. And I wish I, I literally threw this together this week. It's going to be way more concise. You guys get the first uh, go at it, but it's all the raw footage, you know. So anyways, this, is, uh, this was all grass. We came in and we brought in compost and mulch. So the whole theme of this whole thing is you, before you even think about planting, you want to get the soil amazing. Like, what does that mean? That basically means a lot of organic matter, like compost, um, Chaya, all these things break down and they turn to really good soil. So instead of like putting it at the side of the road and having them bring it to the landfill and make more methane emissions, you know, we could really utilize this to create amazing soil. So that's what we're doing here in the backyard. Um, this is me with a uh, $5 marketing setup. I, <laughs> I probably grabbed this out of the dumpster, literally, and we painted it and I put some clothespins with some of my jobs that we did. And I went to the farmer's market. I thought, OK, I love farmer's markets. I go there. I'm into gardening. Other people who go there might be into it too, right? Crazy. This was a, a sign. I was selling moringa trees, papaya, bananas. Um, not much has changed. And then we, along came Urban Abundance. And basically, I got really clear on what we wanted to do. And it wasn't just oh, we can grow food, there's a garden bed. It was like, okay, we've done enough of these. It's like, what are we really out here trying to do? Okay, we want to help people grow food. Where? At home. <laughs> Amazing. So that's what we got to do. And what does that look like? It looks like growing vegetables, growing fruit trees, and that grow well in our climate. So that's what it is. Like, basically, this is what I teach in my master class. What do we want to eat? What do we use in our kitchen? And what grows well here? And that's where you, you, you grow in a perfect world. So anyways, uh, this uh, is one of the pictures. Anyways, this is uh, me at the farm. Eventually, we started growing 
I'm pretty proud of that, isn't that sweet? That was all grass. <laughs> and uh, anyways, we got some uh, like radishes, I believe, and then arugula, mizuna, so much greens. We could literally feed a hundred. There's a hundred bags of, you know, Trader Joe's greens right there. And it was $10 worth of seeds, you know. So it's amazing what we could do. But it was also 4,000 hours worth of work, you know, <laughs> over the course of a couple years. But, but literally, <laughs> that's, I think that's the punchline, too. It takes a lot of work. But I think if you have the why, the how becomes a lot easier, right? So, like, why are we doing this? Why are we trying to grow food? I mean, these grocery stores, like, who even knows if they're going to have them at some point, you know? Like, these supply chains are crazy. And without getting too dark, like, really, like, we've lived such in a good, uh, in a good time where we've had Whole Foods and amazing restaurants. Like, nothing, everything in this world is temporary. And, uh, and anyways, uh, I'm super grateful for all these. So I think, I think what I'm trying to say is the world isn't scarce. And we live in a scarce world. You know, we think everything's expensive. Every, the world is actually abundant. There's food everywhere. We could just tap into it. You know, so before we get... They say, adversity makes men, prosperity makes monsters. And I've, I've seen that in my, in my life, you know? And I think that a prosperous society does the same thing. So I think if we really come down to earth, <laughs> you know, and uh, it will do us a lot of good. Like literally down to earth. Anyways, I digress. Let's uh, look at the pics and what I've learned. This is me building a garden bed barefoot. So eventually, we started to really get this down. We would use cedar wood and we char it to make it last a really long time. It's this old Japanese technique. And it works. Um, it is beautiful. And it, but I will say these, this wood comes from the Pacific Northwest. It's far away, you know. Hopefully one day maybe we could figure out a source closer, but I'm working on it, you know. Our soil comes from actually Atlantic West, super local, certified organic from horse farms. Um, and anyways, I try to use as much local resources as possible. This is me at the farmer's market. Marsha, she's sweet. She started a food truck, a vegan food truck. Um, anyways, this is where it's at. Meeting people and, you know, touching them and giving them plants can do so much. It's wild. This is me fruit hunting for jackfruit. <laughs> it's the largest tree-born fruit in the world. I think there's, yeah, there's... You do your research, but it's massive. <laughs> There's watermelons and all sorts of big fruits, but this one's delicious when you try it. It's just one of those that you can't get enough of. It's, you know, you don't want to share it. <laughs> but you do because it's so special. This is me. I started to get a team. Uh, this is Rachel. She's from Indiana. Leanne, she's from Jupiter. Kami, she's from Columbia. Just brings you together food. Um, this is a side yard in Juno Beach. We have a hundred gardens out there that we service between uh, Broward and uh, Martin County. And I'm hoping to do more of this. You know, there's a thousand landscaping companies. Why can't we have 10 edible landscaping companies, right? I think there's room for it with all this spraying and whatnot. This is me at my farm. Another, uh, look at that hat. Hilarious. <laughs> this is Talia. She works with me. And this is a cool point. Yeah, we're always literally driving around town all day, planting tomatoes and mint every single day. And literally, if I think I can't plant enough, I think we could do, I think we could do a little bit more. Imagine if 1% of the population took growing food at home seriously. And not seriously, but like became passionate about it. That's like another word to say, right? Like became passionate where it was a, a massive impact, you know? It was a beautiful thing. Um, I think something cool about this is Talia, she reached out a couple years ago to work in the garden because I needed someone to work in the garden. And then it turns out she has an amazing skill. She could edit videos. We come together. I want to show people how to grow food at home. Virtually, we could touch more people. We end up making videos. We've done you know, hundreds of videos. Like, you know. But it's cool because she started as, you know, as a green thumb in the garden with us. This is Leo. Look at all these fertilizers. Again, we, sh we get them shipped in to juice up the garden because the soil here in Florida is so sandy and just there's not much organic matter, right? So some people come down here, they say, oh, we can't grow down here. I think that's a belief system I would challenge because I do it every day and you could eat salad out your garden every day. Like literally we could do it. You just have to build the soil. So, you know, just a side note, I guess I use really good compost, right? 
and uh, fill up the garden beds. And then I sprinkle in chicken manure for some uh, nitrogen. They have vegan options, you know, but it's a byproduct. You know, these chickens are already pooping, you know. <laughs> and then we use nutrients uh, from rock minerals called azomite. And they mine it from the earth. It's not the best practice, you know. So you could build soil. Like, hopefully, one day I'm hoping that we could have enough compost coming from our members' gardens, from neighbors, from, you know, byproduct from the tomato clippings. We could produce these nutrients, you know. Um, but for now, we're... we're uh, this is like three years of, you know, fertilizer. So Leo, he charred in the beds. Boom, these are our new garden setups. Um, we'll do irrigation, we'll make it, I basically wanna make it easy for someone. I think about when, <laughs> when like Apple was coming out with computers and stuff, no one understood it. They were like, no, we're not, we don't need that in my life. You know, I've gone my whole life without this. Why would I need it? Now we all have an iPhone and we're like, do you know what I mean? Like, I think there's a place for gardening for all of us, you know, microgreens, bananas, medians in the street, like, I think we all have a place for it, right, and it's cool, like, uh, anyways, I, uh, and it's cool, because it's not technology that hasn't been discovered, it's all this, like, mystical thing around, it's ancient technology, it's stuff we already knew, our, our ancestors already knew, so it's just tapping into that, that's kind of cool, so anyways, oh, I turned it off, there it is, <laughs> How's everyone doing? Yeah. Heck yeah. This is Julia. So, oh my God, Machiko mentioned that uh, she's holding a jicama, which is an amazing crop. I didn't even irrigate this all summer. Think about how hot it gets in summer. It made this massive potato like thing you make fries out of in the air fryer. It's amazing. Um, she was, she actually came to me and said, Hey, can I come work on your farm as an intern, as a woofer? And basically that's what I did. It was like work trading on farms for like, I worked trading on like probably 50, over 15 farms in different cities all over the world. And I always wanted to do it for someone else because these farmers taught me everything. They're like, hey, that's how you do it. And uh, you know, while the kids were in school and she reached out and I could finally reciprocate um, what was given to me to her. So I'm hoping to have more interns. That was pretty cool. This is Stefan, he's putting together a compost system. So for compost, you know, there's like those tumbler things, there's like all these products they're trying to sell you like on Amazon and stuff, made out of plastic. I'm like, you know, we, uh, we don't really need like plastic. Like this is a fancy one for like a nice client on Jupiter Island, but like literally you could just take fencing, you know, old fencing, cut it, put like a zip tie together, put a bungee. These are how the pros do it. This is what we do at our shop and you fill it up. So you fill it up with leaves, you know, oak leaves and mulch and like lemongrass and chaya cuttings. And it would fill up and then like eggshells from the kitchen and banana peels, all the stuff that goes to the earth, right? Except meat and dairy, because there's like, you know, you don't want to mess with that. Um, it'll all break down in here, you know, all the plant matter. And then at the end, it'll be this perfect soil and you'll top it off in your garden the next season. So that's what we're starting to do with members. So it could be a closed loop so we don't have to truck in all the soil. You see what I mean? When you do yeah. one of those, uh -huh. do you have to still like stir it up? Like Great question. I, not really. Okay. Yeah, because <laughs> it's got so much airflow and if you water it in as you go. Oh. But the other ones you have to because there's not those two ingredients. You need air and water in your compost, just like us. You know, the same thing or else they don't die. Oh. Just when you build it, the whole time you build it. Yeah, for a couple of days and then it'll just stay wet. Yeah, good question. All right, and then we came out with merch. We're trying to spread the word. <laughs> uh, inspiring our local community, sharing knowledge and experience, stuff like this. Like I'm really hoping to do more of this um, because it's so groovy and sexy and cool and trendy. It's amazing. Who doesn't want to do this? This is us at a... Uh, Montessori school. Look at how happy these kids are dancing in the back. <laughs> and then we had a master class. This was literally right when COVID hit too. My first master class. But it was so much fun. It was honestly great. It pulled everyone away from COVID. Everyone was like, oh my God, it's amazing. We're not looking at the news every second. And anyways, it was a two-day event we had uh, where we could just take a breath, 
take, like, take a break from life and literally learn about the plants and learn, like, observe the plants and identify. And that's where it starts to happen. We make relationships with the plants. They become like Biden's, like, they become your friend, right? You see them, oh, there's my friend, you know? So it's like building relationships with plants. They say you grow up. We grow up with the green wall, right? Remember growing around, driving around your town as a kid? This is green. We don't know plants. So I think the next, you know, is to learn them too. This is me and Pete Canaris. He's a legend. He's, he's planted thousands of fruit trees, you know? So I look up to him. I've had the chance to, you know, collaborate with amazing people like him. He's out of Tampa. This is me at the master class in, at the farm in one of the food forests uh, that we started in that side yard. Um, planting some yucca and like that back to what we were saying it's a cutting when you start yucca it's a potato yucca I don't know if you've had yucca fries or anyone in, down in Cuba, Cuba Miami it's amazing it makes this great potato and anyways you start it with a cutting just like that you break off a branch you cut it all clean probably you know and then you put it in the ground stick it drive it in the ground water it in mulch it it will grow a beautiful plant and grow a potato so that's how you start it not all Plants are start from seed, they start from cutting, or maybe root division, you know? So there's other ways to propagate, we learn. This is an article about me, pretty cool. Meet Jackson Anguis, he's the owner, educator, and farmer of Urban Abundance. What? <laughs> Some of our gardens, abundance, baby. I don't know who put that. Um, but this is one of our gardens, and I'm just gonna show you kind of some clips. But look, we got kale, we put in pollinators in the garden to make habitat. A lot of the time, some people see a caterpillar in the garden or a bug, and they want to spray it right away. But I think sometimes, because, you know, even though there are organic sprays and even though the bug might be eating the plant, I don't think it's the end of the world. If they're eating the plant, that means it's a, there's no poisons on it. It's a good, we, we want to eat it too. But we don't see it in the store, so it freaks us out, you know? But uh, anyways, when we spray, we also spray the bad guys. In the, or excuse me, the good guys in the garden who eat those bad guys who are eating your plants. Like, so you don't want to do it. There's spiders, there's all these cool predators, ladybugs, that are going to come in and eat the aphids that are messing with your plants. Not every time, but if you uh, create enough habitat, that will happen. Pretty cool, right? Here's another garden, Palm Beach. Honestly, I got all our early gardens. I didn't even pull any of the last like, year or something, so we get throwbacks, which is cool. This is sweet. This is in Palm Beach Island, um, right near where Ade grew up. Uh, I grew this for a high-end restaurant in uh, West Palm. It's green beans, Swiss chard. You can see broccoli. They're young. That's a broccoli plant. Broccoli is actually a flower. So it looks like kale. It's all leafy. And then it's like, boom, it makes a broccoli. And then those little balls will turn into flowers. You see, it's so beautiful. Um, but you want to harvest it before then and get your broccoli. Um, this doesn't exist anymore due to development. We built some homes on it. So I think that's a good lesson. When, when are we going to start valuing resilience of our society over short-term gains? Boom, look at this cool setup on the patio. This is like a week into it. We seeded some arugula. That's something you do from seed. Really easy, really productive. Make pesto. Boom, one week later, look, ready to harvest. This was cool. We did this for the iguanas. So down here, you have iguanas. See, we started up in Jupiter kind of out of iguana zone. I don't want to speak too soon because of climate change and whatnot. But down here, I have clients. This is in Lake Worth. So who here has had issues with iguanas in the garden? Yeah, it's a thing. They, they'll climb anything. So... I do have a new model. Like this actually grew up and it was like growing into the sides. It's still kind of cool, like a little poolside garden. Now we put plexiglass fencing because the iguana can't climb it. Yeah, it's a new development. Food forests. I wanted to show some food forests. So that was veggie gardens, right? So I like to think of my garden, my yard, as a portfolio where there's short term. Uh, and then there's long-term crops, short-term crops and long-term crops. So the garden's kind of like your short-term, right? Arugula is ready in 30 days. Radish is ready in like three, 25 days. 
crazy from seed. You could have a radish and pull it out of the ground. Carrots take like four or five months. So it's like five times longer than radishes, which is crazy. But worth it. Worth it. Still kind of in that little, you know, because they're so good from the garden. But anything kind of those annual short term, long term is the food for us, right? I'm going to plant it. I'm going to plant it out. It's not going to produce really for like two or three or four years, like heavily. I, will, I would just won't, I won't expect a lot of it. Bananas will produce within a year. Um, and that's in the food forest. So anyways, I guess for context, what is a food forest, right? Because there's vegetable gardens. We're all familiar with that. In the full sun, really good soil, tomatoes, herbs, all the stuff we're used to. Food forest is a little different. It's, a bio, again, a biodiverse system, which means many different lives, like a lot of variety. It means a lot of variety in one space, biodiversity. And it produces a ton of food. So the idea is to make an abundance of food. That's the idea. And then it all works together in itself. Long story short. So we kind of mimic. We don't have like the perfect permaculture design. Like I don't claim to have that. But I do know a lot of these plants. And we have made models that really work for like suburban spaces, you know, to make a lot of abundance. So moving right along, this is a banana plant. We do some uh, walkways, you know, to make it pretty, but you don't have to do that. Um, bananas, mangoes, there's so much life right here. This is Vitex. Pictures, it's hard, to, it's hard to see it. You know, look at this. This was just Calusia before. You see that in the back? And now look at it. So cool. Pentas, lemongrass. Blue porter weed, they like, are the best pollinators. They'll pollinate all your passion fruit vines. Cool. So anyways, we talk gardens. We talk food for us. I hope you guys are learning something. I'm really trying to give you it all. Breakdown, I know it's a lot. It's like the download. Um, but now we're going to discuss like plants. You know, what, what, what grows the best in our climate? So to give you some inspiration, what have I found? How much time we got? Okay. I apologize, we're running late, so... Can I, can I wrap it up real quick? We understand. Yeah, we're going to keep going, but we... Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, we they see me and do it. Are we into it? Yeah. Heck, yeah. All right. We're, we're almost there. Okay. <laughs> Heck, yeah. But you can leave. I don't know. It's all good. So, uh, yeah. So, plants. So, <laughs> what have I found that grows the best in our climate? Bananas grow amazing. And a lot of people say, doesn't it attract rats? You know, I'm sure it probably does, <laughs> but I don't know. Garbage does the same, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, harvest it before it becomes ripe and bring it inside. Um, <laughs> ch cherry tomatoes um, and carrots. These are probably the easiest to grow. I won't say the easiest, but uh, yeah, like I wouldn't get discouraged. Like a lot of like these carrots took me like a couple years to learn, right? Because they're like, why won't it make it to carrot form? Like what's going? Like it takes like seasons to learn. And I realized you got to water them in the first month; they'll never take. And then you walk away. Then four months they got carrots. So, so I would encourage you guys to try it because it's like the first time, the first garden I did. I'm telling you, or one out of the first five. I remember that I seeded and I, I didn't know all the crops. I, you know, as well as I do now. And he was like, man, I was weak. You know, I didn't have a good, like, it wasn't like perfect from the get, you know, your first garden is not going to be perfect. So keep at it and you'll have abundance. This is cool. This is like the guanabana fruit, kind of different. It's called sugar apple. I've had the opportunity to work for like these crazy cool big clients or whatever. And they have like hundreds of amazing exotic trees and I've learned so much. Um, so picking these, you know. This is cool. This is Lago spinach. It's super different. Um, and you have to cook this. But I love it. Look it up. Lago spinach. It's so amazing. Mexican sunflower. It's not the same sunflower as uh, you'll see up north. But it's beautiful. You see it around here driving around town. Pigeon peas. This is an incredible source. This is a staple down in South America. It's amazing. You grow it. It's like a tree. Yeah. They call it gandules, you know, rice and gandules in Puerto Rico and stuff and all these Caribbean places. It's a great protein source. Like we made this soup out of it at the farm. It feed everyone for a week. It was amazing because it's so productive. So pigeon peas, I love. Mangoes, who here has a mango tree? 
Yeah, they attract the squirrels, I will say, right? But uh, it's worth it. We'll beat them to it. Lettuce. Lettuce is a perfect one to do in the cold weather season. So I would repeat, if you want to start your veggie garden, like your annual garden, tomatoes, basil, parsley, all those things, start it after Labor Day, kind of the fall, going into the winter season where it's cool weather. You'll have amazing, delicious Salanova greens. Bok choy does amazing. This plant, my friend is growing it in his forest. He didn't even start like prepare the soil like I tell everybody to, like I said, he just planted it in the sand. Bok choy is growing in the forest. Crazy in the, under the pine trees. So it's amazing what these guys want to grow. Turmeric, cool, yeah. Super good for you. Um, can't say enough good things about turmeric. It grows amazing. It's so beautiful. And then it dies back in the winter. And it comes back even stronger. It's amazing. Yucca, this is the potato. I was talking about the cutting. You guys see it? It's sprouting. Super cool. Eggplant. This is a Japanese eggplant. I think it's just so beautiful. Um, boom, and we're almost at the end. This is a drone shot of one of our projects. I always, I always try to do a perimeter. Like, you could do rocks in that, but I do that so grasses don't keep coming in. Check it out. There's actually a fencing company that came in and did fencing around the whole thing for the peacocks and the iguanas. And it worked. It's in Parkland. It's really badass. Thank you, guys. That's all I got. <laughs>